Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is again from Starcon, upper in corner. We have Arda Turtle starting as the purple Zerg, bottom left in corner. We have Nesh starting as the orange Terran. I think I'm just labeling these upper and lower bracket. I'm going to continue from that point on because as far as the official rounds, it's kind of scattered a little bit based on how the bracket was constructed. And also, I guess I'll just name it based on what the map is. So this is lower bracket, which is best of one. Uh, part of the Vermeer round. So this is the Vermeer round of that, which unfortunately I feel uh, I got like this and maybe one or two other replays and then we'll be out of the Vermeer round of the lower bracket and then it moves on I think to like Retro and the Dark Origin and so on and so forth. So the opening maps will be how we're defining the upper and lower bracket rather than by saying like round one or round two or whatever. I'll, but I'll just be saying upper bracket and lower bracket as the games continue. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. Mostly because like the, the tournament's been decided these are just the games that didn't make it to the mainstream i wanted to make sure these guys get commentated i'm excited about this match i definitely favor nesh because nesh is just really really strong in the macro play but i'm excited to see art turtle go up against him i think maybe because nesh hasn't nesh is actually oddly lesser known i know that art turtle just played gypsy i don't feel like how do i put this gypsy is a better player than nesh but it's not like that is such an insurmountable gap it's kind of, I guess, the foreigner scene equivalent. Let's call Gypsy Flash. And I wouldn't, I would, I'm trying to think of like the equivalent player, uh, pro player of, um, trying to think of like what Terran would I say Nesh is an equivalent to that. I wouldn't say he's, he's not like light level. I wouldn't say like light or rush. I would say someone like, uh, Speed, 10 minute Flash, that guy. Pretty a solid player. But at least at this sort of thing, it's weird because like Nesh is upper echelon. But I'm not quite sure how to like put that into words. But anyway, it'll be it's it's it'll be fun to see Arda Turtle play up against an upper echelon foreigner Terran. That's what I'm trying to say. And right now I wish I had like just a big list of Terran where I could be like, this is the Terran that equivalent across the point being like, there is a gap, but this is just me getting myself into trouble. There is a gap, I think, that Nesh will even acknowledge this, and Gypsy definitely would acknowledge this. There's a gap between Nesh and Gypsy, but it's not like this massive gap that's so large that Nesh couldn't put in a massive amount of practice and get to Gypsy's level. Does that make any sense? Like, Nesh isn't... Like, there's 200 MMR, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, I'm just getting myself in... Uh, I'm not making a good parallel right here. Point being, I feel like in the foreigner scene, they're like both at the pro level. And Gypsy is definitely the favorite overall in that sort of thing. But Nesh isn't, it is like in the realm of that same level of play. So it'll be interesting to see Arda Turtle, who again, I think isn't favored versus Nesh, going up against that level of play. And I was actually excited to see that Urban was actually, I going into the games, I don't know that I would have favored, like Urban. He has weaker versus Terran, but it was good to see him play this. Anyway, this time, Arda Turtle playing heads up. Got the gas down at a good timing. Has the layer up. He's not doing anything uh, too crazy. And it might be because he might not recognize uh, Nesh's name overall in comparison. And so we're going to get a good game out of him. He's going for Zergling speed. Everything's looking more standard. Nesh, in the meantime, doing the standard stuff as well. He's going to go for that two racks opener. And the thing is, is Nesh just has beautiful, brutal macro. Right now, though is going to be playing in the dark because the Zergling's already able to get that first SCV out of the way. Going to go ahead and march up and see a somewhat exposed natural expansion. I don't think he's going to roll for it, but never mind. Here I thought, okay, this is going to be a heads-up play. Instead, it looks like we might see Arter Turtle playing a two-hatch Lurker build. Everything looked up to this stage. This might catch Nesh off guard because everything up to this stage looked like it was going to be two-hatch Mutalisk. Zergling Speed's going to come online. That should help them take out any SCVs that might try to crawl across the field. You can see the Zerglings back here just in case another SCV was able to sneak out in the field. Nesh hasn't dedicated an additional scout. He's going to wait on that, that academy to finish and the comms hat to be in place. He's playing the uh, little... Again, I feel like he's uh, about a year behind in the meta. So still playing 2 rack style, but more from about a year ago. Uh, sort of style of it with the... Academy, we'll, we'll see if he goes for stim and gets things up, but we already have Lurker Tech being upgraded and a second extractor being plopped down from Arda Turtle. Let's see if he plops down an interior third base hatchery, because, and this might not be an all-in, this might just be playing uh, heads-up Lurker style, 
against this, going for kind of the soft contain macro up past that. There are opportunities to just complete things out, but this isn't economically, it, it's a little bit of an early economic hit, but it's not economically irrecoverable for Arditor. He's currently about four drones off, probably where he wants to be, but not in such a uh, situation where he couldn't recover out of this. Two medics being produced, Right now, CompSat station being dropped, Engineering Bay alongside Stimpak about halfway, not a lot of latent detection, and the initial two lurkers being morphed. Now, here's the trick. If Nesh CompSats, if he just drops both of his CompSats, if he CompSats the natural expansion first and then drops the second CompSat at the main, he might be in trouble, especially if he doesn't get turrets down in a hurry. So, first one at the natural expansion, unfortunate. And does he spend the second one? does not spend the second one so right now he doesn't see it coming so things working out for Arter turtle no i think he sees some things up second bunker being dropped maybe i missed that he dropped the second comps out right there but getting turrets in position dropping a turret at the natural expansion this might also be respect play or maybe he just saw a good amount of zerglings right there and he's like uh oh something's up <coughs> so lurkers starting to move in position nesh just smelled it out of nowhere i thought he missed the comps out, but apparently hit it and so now Turret's up, he's got an additional compsat to spare. But this is just four lurkers here, and a queen's nest dropping with the third base coming online the upper left. And Arter Turtle with this, again, this isn't an all-in by any means. He's not in the best economic position. He's got a lower drone count than he wants, but what he can do is go for the soft contain from here. Fill in, get a lot of, just basically drone up, get that third gas, make his way towards Hive tech and play from here. Doesn't have to push it as an all-in. So yeah, going going for more defensive play. Four barracks coming online. Factory being plopped down as well. Nesh pausing production momentarily, wanting to get to science vessel as rapidly as possible. We'll see if he builds a siege tank as well. Hive tech morphing on top of that, top right, as that hatchery starting to be built upper left-hand corner. That'll be the third gas. And the timing of this pretty decent for Arditor actually. I think he's going to be able to get that Hive online. We'll see if Nesh though, old school player, knows how to deal with this sort of thing. He's got the double bunkers in a defensive slot. Nesh not going to die to an all-in right here, but again, this isn't an all-in. Machine shop dropping, so it looks like he does want to try to fill in some siege tanks. Also had, ooh, going a big mech switch behind this. <coughs> Interesting. So going to go up to three factories, also hiding these factories away from the majority of the vision. We do have a, so the Queen's Nest up the, we also have a Spire dropping the natural expansion. I wonder if this is going to turn into Guardians again from Arter Turtle as far as a swap in. Might be a little bit of a stronger attempt depending, especially because Nesh right now pausing marine production. He's not going up to science vessels and instead is going siege tech, siege tank, now dropping that starport. But this is greatly delaying the science vessel which means he has to rely on, and I'm a little bit shocked by this, because yes, siege tanks do range lurkers, even unburrowed, but this means that it's gonna come, it's gotta be commsats to defend the front. Nesh testing the front door, losing a couple marines, might have been a off position right there. Extractor online. We do have the defiler mound being morphed. We also have the uh, zergling adrenal gland, so it looks like it is gonna be lurker ling in the late game. And I'm curious if this spire immediately starts morphing into a greater spire as soon as it completes, or if it's just going to be there for the Scourge. Mostly this is just me thinking about game one. Lurkers under siege fire being pushed off a little bit by the initial comps at one of them dropping, but there's still a decent soft contain. The engineering bay floating ahead to go ahead and spot them. Looks like it is just going to be potentially for the Scourge or maybe an after thought down the line. Third gas up and running. We do have the defiler mound being built, and this is well ahead of, so a third command center getting dropped from Nesh going to turn it into more mech game. He's in a pretty good supply situation. He's got those siege tanks that push back everything, but Defiler's coming online. Consume is going to be here, and this is well before anything is pushed out towards the front. Now, thing is, is for Arter Turtle, he still does need Bunker also being taken down to open up some reinforcement points at the front. Arter Turtle does need some troops on the ground to go ahead and engage Nesh, should Nesh try to pressure the front door with these siege tanks. Some vultures sneaking out as well, Nesh is going to go ahead and move that third command, uh, third command center up. And Nesh doing a really good job of hiding the fact that this is a mech transition as well. And so Arter Turtle is still kind of playing it more medic marine defensive 
rather than playing it in a uh, style where he's building mass, which is usually what you want to do versus mech. A single marine has been able to punch out. It's making its way top left. A lurker burrowing there top left. So Nesh with this might be able to catch Arter Turtle by surprise. Actually going to float out some of these barracks to do some forward scouting even. And we'll see if the vultures are able to get... He's, he's kind of hiding back <coughs> Excuse me, the presence of these vultures for as long as possible. Ooh, big mistake here from Arter Turtle. Hasn't been mining gas this entire time, even though he's been holding that. That's going to be critical. Now some lurkerlings making their way out in the field. Consume finished. We have some defilers out there. <coughs> Excuse me. On the field, but now this is where those zerglings discover. Oh no, we've got some medic we've got some vultures out in the field, which means we need to be a little bit careful. Get some overlord speed to deal with it. The zerglings trying to push forward. That's very as long as the vultures clear. And this is kind of the game from here on out. We're gonna have vultures trying to clear the zerglings, keep them off the mines, so that the lurkers and defilers can't get forward and try to pick off those defilers as well. Good job. Thus far, we have a dropship behind this. So only two defilers make it bottom right. We have the lurkers in between. Oh, Nesh, unfortunately, moving a little bit too far forward into him. This is very scary. You've got Orange Cloud near that natural expansion. The Siege Tank Splash still does hit the lurkers under Cloud, but it's only the explosive damage that lands, and it's at an offset. So Nesh, having trouble at his natural expansion, has to wait for that Cloud to complete. Siege Tank's moving out now. Just has to wait for that to clear, and more lurkers... Making the way in, Arter Turtle might have an opportunity to win it right here if he can get another Defiler down here. Might be able to pick off that turret as well. Siege Tank's trying to get the splash damage underneath the cloud. It's not happening. Edge of that cloud looks... Okay, now it's complete. Still spotting right there. Some mines in between, and Arter Turtle might have missed a game-winning opportunity right there. <coughs> Wasn't able to get another Defiler down here with some additional troops, and so having to cede some territory, it's not game over, but he does need to take some additional territory. He does need to get a move on. Do we have armories up yet? Looks like that first armory being planted, so no plus one weapons, sorry, plus one weapons underway for Nash. So now he's got that siege tank vulture army. Some mutilists being constructed. Nash might not have enough anti-air right this second. I don't see a science vessel out. He again went with that dropship. He's got some medic... It looks like just some marines planted bottom right to go ahead and defend that. He's moving out towards his third. But I'm a little bit concerned by his lack of both Goliaths and science vessels. Because I don't think he realizes that a spire was in fact in place. And this is going to open up Arta Turtle to have a massive counterattack in the form of unanswered air units. A couple turrets being constructed, but... Mutal's just going to go ahead and move back out, take care of that. And Nesh has nothing needs to worry about these siege tanks now and a lot of other really critical tech. Arter Turtle closing the supply gap to just 10 is working just completely decimating. That third is going to be able to wipe that out, but that might actually be a benefit because it is providing some time to maybe get some form of anti-air up. He's building all sorts of Goliaths right this second. But right now, Arter Turtle striking a lot of damage, able to get into the main with this tech switch. Group repair not there for the first turret. Second turret falls, but fortunately a few Goliaths out at the very least. But upon this, Arter Turtle building some additional Mutalisks to try to clear out. and Might be a little bit late, unfortunately, but still might have an opportunity to take out some of these Vultures and Siege Tanks that are currently undefended by the Goliaths out in the field. All sorts of turrets up now from Nesh. Still going to go ahead and pull back and claim that third. It's his to take. More mines being moved that at least is going to be able to detect some of the Hydralisks and Mulisks as they're making their way out, but this is going to be some sacrificial siege tanks and units. This is going to be a difficult recovery position for Nesh. Arter Turtle, though, not... I want to say Arter Turtle behind this, keeping his drone count still very, very low, is, in, is trying to create game-ending unit compositions. And I missed this, a drop of vultures into the main, so maybe the... That being a reason for the lower drone count as well. Apologies for that. A nice drop from Nesh, creating some additional distractionary attack. Shutting down the gas, getting all sorts of drone kills. So it's a base trade for a base trade, and I think this might end up hurting Arter Turtle more than it hurts Nesh, because when you talk about even bases, especially with Mech Army behind it, usually that's advantage to Terran. Mutalus trying to push up, yeah, get as many siege tech, etc. kills as possible. Some lurkers just waiting to burrow. 
In the meantime, it looks like Arter Turtle has been able to clean up the main, but hasn't re... Hasn't, again, is continuing to build units, not a lot of drones, and it looks like the Mutalist now being challenged by those Goliaths on the front. Arter Turtle trying to track a lot of these units and pick off what he can. Dark Swarm dropped, but it was only a single Lurker in that. He still has 10 Mutalists in the forward field, but Nesh pressing out and sending... Oh, this is unfortunate. Arter Turtle might have been able to engage. Actually, the Dark Swarm might have worked to the Goliath's advantage right here. If he had not dropped that Dark Swarm, might have been able to stick in this. Instead, now a Valkyrie moving out to support those Siege Tanks alongside those Goliaths, and that might be sufficient. Arter Turtle now dropping behind in supply. He is starting to fill that drone count in and re-engaging, trying to deny Nesh that third. One thing is, unlike standard TVZ, if you... Transi if Terran transitions into mech and you do not continually expand, you do end up in a starvation situation, particularly against the fantastic trades that Art of Turtle is scoring thus far. Able to get a lot of these siege tanks wiped out and taking out that science vessel as well. Or sorry, the, sorry, not the science vessel, the command center as well. Starting to float back up and deny that. So we've got another minute before the mains mined out. Nesh is going to be basically down to a single base and that is not enough to sustain, uh, sustain mech. Sorry for the loudness in the background right there. But Arterturl also a little bit slow to saturate additional bases and he's not taking additional bases himself. Is just sticking to the Mutalisk and the Hydra is starting to bleed to the spider mines as well. I'm looking for, I think he's got Overlord speed completed but isn't clearing out the mines that are already out in the field. So Nesh might have an opportunity to press back out. Doesn't have much of an army Right the second is mostly in, wow, a heavy anti-air composition. Not a lot of siege tanks left. That is going to be successful against Arter Turtle, though, because Arter Turtle doesn't have a lot of lurkers or hydralisks underneath this, and it looks like the lurker is going to get caught as they're morphing. Ex yeah, cancellation and explosion right there. Instant death, and I like Nesh's vision coverage where he's making sure that no additional bases have been taken, but Nesh desperately needs to grab an additional base because his main now mined out, finally dropping a science facility. Sorry, he rescued that command center early, so it didn't end up exploding, but moving back out, this is an opportunity, though, for Nesh, if he recognizes it, or sorry, Arter Turtle, if he recognizes it, to take additional territory and drone up heavily and get himself up to four gas. Right now, he is that roving Mutalisk army, and mostly seems to be focusing on that and filling in a little bit of army where I feel like his time would be better spent recognizing that Nesh is able to secure an additional base, grabbing additional bases for himself, instead moving out, taking down some of these latent barracks, finally grabbing that fourth, now starting to grab drones, but this might be a minute or two too late as some vultures starting to press out in the field. Looks like mostly Zerglings, I've oh, got a couple Hydralisks here at the Natural Expansion, maybe to defend there. Let's see if we can get some Hydralisks or maybe some Lurkers to the top left as well. The Zerglings being peeled off. Yeah, you, this is where it can be frustrating for Zerg. You need to just send out individual Zerglings as kind of a forewarning and hope they don't get picked off by those vultures. Mule's trying to take care that the Filer is safe here at the 9 o'clock location, but the vultures have snuck through, able to skirt past that lurker, and now, just as Arter Turtle getting a healthy drone count, losing some drones top left. Hyglos look like they're going to be able to clear that up. And Mutalisks are running all over the map chasing those vultures, which is allowing Nesh to sit back and get that third base up and running. And continue to... Oh, now plus one, plus one. Making his way to plus two, although he's going for the ship upgrades to maybe make the Valkyries hit a little bit harder, interestingly enough. I don't think he's going to transition to Wraith. I would be absolutely shocked. Yeah, I think that's mostly just to make sure to mitigate any sort of Mutalisk threat. We'll see if Ardor of Turtle switches back to... It looks like he is getting the Hydralisk upgrades. It looks like he might switch back to Hydra Swarm. He's also dropping that Ultralisk Cavern. He does have a fourth gas open to him if he grabs it. Might want to... If he can get an Overlord here, clear the mines, maybe grab another base or two. Could just outswarm Nesh over the long run. But in the meantime, Nesh, showing why he's such a brutal competitor, up 30 supply, and not just any supply. This is 30 supply of raw mech. Hydralisk starting to move out. We still have this Defiler at mid position. No overlords alongside to provide spotting. So the mine's going to be trouble. I also have some 
mines there to the north. The Vulture's going to be able to skirt through, and they might be able to get a shot there at the natural expansion out those Hydalus from out of position. Now we're seeing transition to that Greater Spire. And unfortunately for Arter Turtle, he has a lot of Hydalus. He's got Hydalus to the spoke to the west and to the spoke to the south, but the Vultures have still been able to slip through the lines. And it looks like the Vulture's again going to be able to creen in. Fortunately, Nesh, rather than going for the prize at the natural expansion, just going to get a drone or two before the Hydalus are able to clean things up upper left, but the Goliath's pressing in now across that western spoke and finding unupgraded Hydralisks one-on-one versus Goliath and able to just crush that. <coughs> now Arter Turtle grabbing additional expansions, but I worry that it's too little too late. Nesh also grabbing the 6 o'clock. That's uh, under the watchful eye of that Zergling. I guess he's kind of just raiding the construction. He's like, yeah, go ahead and build that there. And it's been hired as a advisor to the Terran army. Vulture might be able to sneak around, but wow, look at this mass of orange moving up the left-hand side of the map in the form of siege tanks and all sorts of Goliaths. A couple Valkyries overhead as well. We do have a Defiler, which can... Oh, never mind. Arter Turtle having some trouble with army control right here. Dark Swarm could switch this around, but he needs to get Zerglings. In between, maybe some Ultralisk. We also have some Guardians being produced, but the Guardians... This is a lot of Goliaths to counter them. Where are the Guardias, Guardians morphing? Not sure. We'll try to look for some purple moving across the map in the form of the Guardians. <coughs> it's not going to be in time, though. Buildings are not protected by Dark Swarm, so that's going to get wiped out top left. So Arter Turtle now losing access to that fourth gas, shortly potentially going to lose access to his third gas. They're the Guardians. At the very least, going to go for a counterattack. So the six o'clock base wiped out. Might be able to wipe out Nesh here. This is turning into a barn burner now. Could turn into a starvation match. Nesh forced to lift off. His natural expansion is gone, so he's no longer mining. So he's got the mech on the ground. The Valkyries scoot, uh, are scooting out. Want to go ahead and try to take care of those Guardians. The Guardians peeling back. Want to try to deal with the Siege Tanks and Goliaths. And they're going to be, ooh, fortunately... Splitting off here and there, both missing each other. Now the Valkyries getting on top of those Guardians and without any sort of air support. It's going to be a matter of time before these Guardians are wiped out. The Goliaths having some trouble, so they're going to get picked off as well. I don't know if this is going to open up a Mutalist counter, but we have some... Ultralisks being constructed by Arter Turtle behind this, and he's moving up to that tech upgrade. He does have this additional base up there to kind of replace that fourth gas he lost... In the meantime, but he's got a depleted gas at his main. He's got a depleted gas at his natural expansion. This is the one healthy gas. There's only 1,500 left. He needs to cap that 3,000 gas as soon as possible. Nesh has similar problems on his side of the map. He needs to reestablish that third and get another base up and running as soon as possible. Does have the supply lead. Running headlong into lurkers without science vessel support. Finally dropping the comsat. <coughs> but the lurker is doing significant damage. The zerglings crawling up. Getting wiped out as well. Nesh wanting to make sure that Arter Turtle isn't able to secure additional gas. A plague dropping, only catching a single siege tank there. And so Arter Turtle in a pretty good position to maybe secure victory still. He's got some amount of minerals. He needs to start mining at this fourth and retake that natural expansion. Instead, moving in Ultralisks and Ultralisks do maximum amount of damage to siege tanks, so completely obliterating them before they're really able to be a factor. The Dark Swarm working against the Guardian that's here, and we finally have a Science Vessel in play that's just gonna finish up that Irradiate to clear things up. Some Zerglings scooting, crowd, uh, scooting across. Arter Turtle has all of the pieces he needs to make this work. He's got Dark Swarm, he's got the Zerglings with Adrenal Upgrades, he's got the air attack, he's got Ultralisks with Dark Swarm, but he's having trouble putting all those pieces together to have a cohesive attack to turn it into victory here. Nesh, in the meantime, again mining on that third, trying to re-secure the 6 o'clock location, do Hydralisks moving in to create just some disruption. Nesh has to defend this third and secure that fourth simultaneously, so that's going to be a pain point for him. Might want to lift this command center off as soon as possible and get it out of there. In the meantime, Nesh re-droning. The Ultralisk getting softened up by what latent mines were still remaining. <coughs> moving, moving to the top left. Finally, Arter Turtle starting to filter in that 4 o'clock. SCVs fighting for them for themselves. 
As they're moving to the 6 o'clock, unfortunately the siege tank's getting scattered on their own SCVs and not able to clear that up, and there's a counterattack of Zerglings drawing Nesh's forces back to that third. Just a handful of Zerglings, so Art of Turtle doing a great job right now of keeping Nesh imbalanced, defending multiple locations. He's got the worker lead now. If he can just get it saturated and get it across some available open bases, he's got a, the upgrades are stalled right this second, but he does have the carapace upgrade, it looks like, for the Ultralisks, although lacking carapace upgrades otherwise, that means Nesh's mech units are going to hit all the harder as they do have plus two weapons, plus one armor. So they're going to get very efficient trades. Vulture's able to sneak into that 12 o'clock, catch Arter Turtle there. Arter Turtle rechecking the 6 o'clock to make sure that's denied. And Nesh, yeah, going to try to float right back out there. He does need to find some opportunity. So good job harassing and making sure that this is cleaned up and some forces need to be dedicated at 12 o'clock. Natural expansion still not taken from Arter Turtle. Arter Turtle denying the 6 o'clock. Nesh needs to dedicate some forces. It looks like moving the Goliaths to go ahead and clear that out. To get things back up and running. It's still anybody's game. Supply counts very, very close. Should still give Nesh the advantage, again, just because of the upgrade differential. Dark Swarm can be a big shift here. Also, if there's a sudden tech switch to Mutalisk, I don't know that there's a lot of Goliath. There's Irradiate, but not a lot of Goliaths left to defend against the air. Finally, Nesh able to clear up the 6 o'clock. So going to land there, get things up and running. 12 o'clock base has two vultures nearby. Unfortunately, a lot of Scourge working there. Zerglings sent instead of Hydralisks for the better trade. More Zerglings trying to crash here to the 6 o'clock. Arter Turtle not going to be able to stop that 6 o'clock from getting up and running. And it looks like Nesh going to be able to push in. So now Arter Turtle in trouble where he's got that 12 o'clock base up. He doesn't have it running though. He hasn't taken additional bases out in the field. He hasn't re-grabbed this natural expansion. He's not that far off having depleted gases across the board. This will be the final, well, it looks like that'll be the final healthy gas. Still hasn't cleared out the vultures at the 12 o'clock. And Nesh is going to be able to run off two bases, maybe grab an additional base, and Nesh starting to macro ahead. Oh, and the vultures, again, maybe catching the, at least pinning the Defiler and the Zerglings in there. More units moving across from Arter Turtle across the map. Valkyrie is currently scouting them as they're moving. Nesh with a good minefield across mid-map and more vultures getting some really good value as the lurkers and zerglings, well, pinning a siege shank there, but the lurkers and zerglings not getting it out in front of this. And so that's clearing up a lot of the forces before they're able to really get on top and engage the rest of the troops. Artichurl kind of scattering some troops up. He doesn't have drop, I believe, with the overlords to kind of fly over this and make that happen. The defiler, once again, may be exposed there. At the 9 o'clock, the vultures have been fantastic. They've finally been cleaned up at the 12 o'clock. Still not saturated from Arter Turtle. 30 supply lead from Nesh. Some more Zerglings starting to filter out. The science vessels starting to build. But we have level 3 weapons on these siege tanks. On the vultures and the Goliaths. And this is, this is going to be very, very difficult to contend with. Particularly with no Carapace. So just the base Ultralis Carapace upgrade and plus 1 otherwise. And vultures starting to fan out. Arter Turtle engaging Vulture's mid-map. I don't know that any of them... We got a few mines are trying to draw them north into the minefield, clear them that way, and just soften them up along the way. So a few Zerglings getting... That is what Arter Turtle was hoping for, is clear those mines with the Zerglings. Now barreling into that 3 o'clock defense matrix on the 2 forward siege tank. And more reinforcements moving in, and it's just not enough from Arter Turtle to breach here. And the Vultures, in the meantime, have swept in to the base in the upper left-hand corner, cleared out the gas, which is critical for Arter Turtle at this stage, although he's running a gas surplus right this second, but completely emptied that base. Arter Turtle re-grabbing the natural expansion top left, but Vulture's right there, so Nesh doing everything he needs to to stay in this match. has boxed himself in at the 6 o'clock location, so he doesn't have to dedicate as many attack forces to defend there, he's sending Vultures all over the map to keep Art of Turtle's drone count low, which is turning into massive success in the upper left-hand corner. And Art of Turtle, man, I thought he had this game at multiple moments, but now it is starting to fall apart, losing all of his drones top left. At half the supply of Nesh all of a sudden, hasn't been able to cap additional bases, has ended up gas-starved across a lot of depleted resources. 
and Nesh is mining at two bases and maybe in a situation where he can start grabbing additional territory. Nesh doing a great job in this war of attrition. Some Zerglings getting some free damage right there, but Nesh now moving out to the natural expansion. Some more Vultures moving to the 12 o'clock. There are Hydralists to engage, but Nesh just barreling in, dropping the mines. Larva getting wiped out. Drones trying to defend themselves, and Goliath and Science Vessels moving up for Nesh to clear out everything top left. Going for a killing blow now. Has Arter Turtle on the defense, even throwing in a Wraith right there, just in case there were Guardians up in the air once again. Going to pick off Overlords out in open field. Yeah, Goliath's now going to move in, and again, they just hit so hard with that level 3 weapons. I think Nesh re recognizes he just has a massive upgrade differential, so going to clear everything out. Arter Turtle going to GG. That's unfortunate. Putting up a good match, but not able to close it out through the latter portions. Entertaining one, though. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm supposed to, I'm being told I should go back to... From chat, I'm gonna go back to 310 and the 12 o'clock location to see if a drone got hit. The end of this. So we'll see. Speed it up a little bit. Looking to see whether the vultures. So here the vultures come in. Yep, drone gets hit by that mine. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.